The thing about Arctic survival history is that most people only know the dramatic parts. Shipwrecks, starving crews, frozen voyages. But, you know, the real secrets, the ones that actually kept people alive for generations, are usually the quiet techniques that never made the sagas. Today, I'm going to walk you through one of those, a forgotten Viking-era home technique used by Arctic settlers that authorities later discouraged and even ordered communities not to teach again. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to The Prepper Historian so you don't miss the deep dives we do here. These are the kinds of skills and stories that rarely get told, and when they do, they disappear fast. Let's start with something that holds every Arctic settlement together. Heat. Not flashy, not romantic, but the one thing that separated settlers who thrived from those who froze in their own homes. And about a thousand years ago, Norse Greenlanders relied on a technique so efficient, so deceptively simple, and so tied to their survival that the later church authorities considered it primitive, even dangerous, and pressured communities to abandon it as Christianity reshaped local rules. The technique revolves around one idea— creating heat without burning through fuel in a land where fuel barely existed. When Viking settlers reached Greenland and the far north outposts, they discovered quickly that the romantic image of endless forests didn't apply. Driftwood was rare, shrubs were precious, and imported timber was a luxury. A modern camper uses more wood in a long weekend than a Norse household had access to in months. Settlers had to rethink heat entirely, reducing open fires to the absolute minimum. This is where the silent technique came in. The settlers created buried heat chambers, small, layered home heating pockets built directly under sleeping platforms and food preparation areas. These weren't fires, they weren't furnaces, they were thermal batteries. The technique worked by capturing the sun's weak arctic heat and slow releasing it overnight through compacted soil, stone slabs, insulating turf and animal fibre. Authorities later discouraged this method because it resembled pre-Christian earth lodge traditions and because it allowed families to remain independent of the church-controlled communal halls which handled fuel distribution. But for centuries it kept entire farmsteads alive. A Norse longhouse in Greenland wasn't just a hall with side rooms. Under the raised sitting platforms, those long benches where families slept, ate, repaired gear, settlers created layered thermal cores. Crew records and archaeological digs at Bratelid, Sandners and Gardar show the pattern clearly. First, a base layer of compacted soil about two hands deep. On top of that, a layer of flat stones set tightly together like a dry-laid floor. Above that went a dense mat of turf, cut with root systems intact, which acted like a primitive fibrous insulation. Then came another layer of stones, smaller and more rounded, followed by a thick covering of woven wool or animal hair, usually leftover fleece too coarse for clothing. During daylight, even dim, cold daylight, these chambers absorbed heat. The stone held it, the soil buffered it, the turf trapped it, and the wool slowed its release. At night, the platform above stayed warm enough that a family could sleep comfortably without burning scarce fuel. 
This wasn't just theory, you know. Archaeologists actually measured the thermal retention of reconstructed chambers and, well, they found temperature differences of about 14 to 22 degrees Celsius between the platform and the ambient room temperature. For people enduring those months-long winters, this really was a matter of survival. By the late 1100s, Greenland's church authorities started to centralise various aspects of community life, including things like fuel storage and building standards. Open hearth halls soon became the accepted, you might say, proper Christian heating method. Old earth-based thermal techniques were, well, dismissed as pagan leftovers, often associated with the Sami and some of the older Norse traditions. Families who still built those silent heat chambers were considered a bit backward or even resistant to authority. Over a few generations, the method disappeared from formal teaching and was replaced by more expensive, less fuel-efficient structures that, ironically, made Norse survival harder, not easier. When the Greenland settlements collapsed, the knowledge collapsed with them. But, you know, the core principle never stopped working. And it's absolutely something modern preppers and homesteaders can adapt. You're not building a Viking longhouse, but the underlying physics are timeless. Dense materials absorb heat, fibrous materials, slow heat loss, and compact layering stabilizes temperature swings. If you want to try a modern adaptation, well, here is a practical way to replicate it. Start by choosing a raised platform surface, a sleeping platform, bench or work surface in a cabin or off-grid shelter. Build a boxed frame beneath it, leaving room for layering. Add a base layer of compacted soil or sand about four inches deep. Then add a layer of pavers or flat stones. Over that lay a thick mat of packed wool, batting felt, or even insulated moving blankets, if that's what you have on hand. Then add a final layer of river stones or bricks. Seal the frame with a breathable but tight wood cover. You've just created a passive heat sink that will absorb daytime warmth from the sun, body heat, or a small stove, and release it all night. It reduces fuel use dramatically, and in a grid-down scenario, that's survival gold. I've personally seen off-grid cabins reduce nighttime heat loss by shocking margins using nothing more than stone, wool, and earth. The Vikings weren't being mystical. They were being practical. And sometimes the practical things get buried under politics, religion, or architectural fashion. When you look at Viking history through this lens, you stop seeing them as reckless explorers, and honestly, you start seeing them as engineers. Their success in the Arctic wasn't luck. It was innovation under pressure. Silent heat chambers were just one piece of a larger system. Turf walls, earth roofs, animal insulation each one carefully designed to solve problems without wasting resources. Today, that knowledge matters more than ever. Whether you're a historian, a survivalist, or, you know, somewhere in between, these techniques remind us that old knowledge doesn't get outdated. It just gets forgotten. If you learned something new, subscribe to The Prepper Historian, share this video with other serious history buffs, and help keep this knowledge alive.